Hey everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 180. Uh, I am also known as Bullen Vine on Ravelry and pretty much everywhere else on the web. And we have a Ravelry group, so if you haven't joined, please do. Uh, there's lots of lively chatter happening in there, and if you want to partake in any of our knit-alongs, uh, that's the place to check them out and uh, participate. Uh, so yeah, welcome uh, to new and returning viewers. Uh, so great to have you, and thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day uh, chatting about crafty things with me. Uh, as always, this is a podcast about spinning, knitting, and hand dyeing yarn in Brooklyn, New York, where I live. Um, so yeah, I have a show for you. <laughs> I have lots of finished objects, which never happens. Um, and I'm going to talk about cowls, knit-alongs that are happening, uh, what's on and off my needles, um, spinning, and just, yeah, the usual format of the show is what's going to happen this week. So, um, but yeah, first I, what did I want to say? I want to say um, thank you to everybody uh, who has reached out to me on Instagram and Ravelry and everywhere else, letting me know, you know, wishing me well. Uh, if you haven't heard, the East Coast got hit with a pretty bad blizzard. <laughs> um, Dennis, uh, we actually got about maybe 30 inches of snow uh, last weekend and we were pretty much housebound, which I was totally cool with. Um, I got lots of knitting done. I got lots of spinning done, which you will see. And, um, but yeah, we, we did get a lot of snow. Uh, Dennis went out there and shoveled a good like four hours the whole weekend, digging out our car, just shoveling the driveway. And the first time around he shoveled our driveway. We don't have a driveway, we have a sidewalk. Um, so the first time he went out there in the morning to um, shovel the sidewalk, within an hour it was already covered over again with more snow. Um, and that mermaid that I mentioned last week, if you remember, I was like, I, I, it, we have like this brass statue mermaid in our backyard sitting on a stump. And remember how I said, she's making me cold. I want to knit her a sweater. Well, the same mermaid, uh, when I woke up that morning on Saturday, uh, she's like in one of these poses, like with her arms behind her head, you know, like being very fancy and um, mermaidy. Uh, <laughs> well, when I woke up that morning, she was up to her uh, waist in snow. That's how high it was. Uh, and then... Yeah, it looked like she was going for a snow dive or something with a polar bear club. Yeah, and then within an hour, she was totally covered over. So just to give you an idea of how much snow we got. Um, but yeah, the house held up. The only major disaster that we had was that we have a skylight that's over our, over our, um, uh, over our staircase in the hallway. And uh, yeah, th there was just, I think there's like one of these, it, it's, the original skylight so it has like a point to it and then I think that there's like a vent at the top so there was so much wind that some of the snowflakes were like gusting in and falling trickling into our home so nothing major we just put down a towel um, we've never had a problem or a leak with it before it's just I think because the winds were so strong little snow flurries were getting in so we just put a towel down and soak up any moisture but so far, so good. The house held up. If you recall, ever since we moved in here, we've just been dealing with some insane issues, uh, you know, being a homeowner and such. Um, but anyway, yes, this is a show about knitting and craftiness, so let me get to that. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody who wished me well and, which you know, and I hope everyone on the East Coast is doing well and keeping warm and finding and just getting yourself dug out of all the snow. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Um, I got lots of knitting done, so I'm not complaining. But anyway, finished objects. I have a lot of stuff off the needles. <laughs> um, first of all, you can, I'm actually wearing it. This is, I cast this on back in July of 2015. So this has been a long time coming. This is my Vera Deer Shawl uh, by Isabel of the Fluffy Fibers podcast. And as promised, it's off my needles. It is blocked, it is lovely, and I'm wearing it, and I love it, love it, love it, love it to death. So, um, I'm very proud of myself for following through on that. And yeah, and this is out of my yarn, Volenvine Yarns, uh, in the Blitzed Sparkle Base, uh, in the Succulents colorway. And I don't know if you can see the little, the shimmer in that. Maybe not. But yeah, you can see a little bit, but there's a lot of glitter in here. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you can tell, like right over here, um, there's a little mistake. I do not know how that happened or how I missed it. Um, anyway, but, and there are a couple of other mistakes that I didn't hear that I will not point out because from here, you cannot tell. Um, 
but yeah again my I was not because I wasn't entirely focused on this pattern while I was knitting it or when I started knitting it um, I, I yeah I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't catch those and go back and fix them because here like towards the end it's perfect <laughs> so I part of me almost wants to do a redo of the shawl and revisit the pattern at a later date but um, otherwise just such a really lovely pattern I have no bad things to say about this pattern it's by Isabel of the fluffy fibers such you know a really wonderful knit and yeah if you're looking for just a simple crescent um, elegant lace shawl to knit this is this is what you should knit. So, um, but yeah, I just really enjoy wearing it across my, this is how I've been enjoying wearing it, uh, just across my shoulders, cause it kind of acts like a little shrug almost. Or it, yeah, it, it really is a shrug. Um, or you can wear it, you know, I haven't worn it like this yet, but um, I could totally see myself wearing it, you know, like this, like I usually wear my shawls, but yeah, I, I really love it. Um, and it block beautifully. So thank you, Isabel, for creating such a lovely, beautiful pattern. Um, and speaking of patterns, well, I'll get to that after I talk about my, my socks. Um, or no, should I talk about this now? I haven't decided. Um, all right, I'll talk about this in, afterwards because I want to talk about the box of socks, Cal. <laughs> so as you know, I am hosting a... Um, a box of socks cal uh which is a year-long knit along that anyone can join uh as long as you uh the, the theory is to knit an entire box of socks it can, the box can be any size decorate it as much as you want to the more creative the better I, I will be giving away a prize for the most creative box of socks um so but the idea is to knit at least 12 pairs of socks one per month until um january first 2017 when I'll close the thread and draw prizes um, but you there's no the only minimum is 12 pairs of socks but you can totally exceed that however many socks you want to knit to stuff into your box have at it have fun go to town <laughs> um especially Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast who if you haven't heard by now she is at the tail end of a sockathon um knitting as many pairs of socks as she humanly possibly can uh in the month of January woman is crazy. She already has, I don't know how many socks to show for, but I think she's at 27, her last episode. I could be wrong, but, um, she reached out to me and says, and has like a cubby, um, of socks. And she wanted to know if that's cool. I'm like, yes, by all means, it's a box. It's a cubby hole. It's like one of those Ikea collapse things that I just showed you, uh, with my new yarn fortress. So that totally counts as well. So this week I have a finished pair of socks. <laughs> uh, these are my Arne and Carlo socks. Uh, the yarn was a wonderful gift from Molly of a homespun house. And I had been coveting this yarn forever and ever since she sent it to me. And I finally cast on, cast them on. And I am in love with these socks. They are so awesome. Um, again, the yarn is uh, Regia uh, four ply and the Arne and Carlo summer, summer night, I believe. And I remember last week I said that, you know, they weren't matching up. I, you know, I wasn't going to riff back. It's not going to bother me. Well, my OCD kicked in and it did bother me. So <laughs> I had the whole heel, um, knit for this. Which one is, okay. This is the second sock. So I had knit the whole entire fish lips kiss heel. And then I was looking at it. I'm like, no, no, I want these to, I want these to match. So I ripped it all out. And while I was editing the podcast, I just re knit the heel and now they match. So, yay, matching pair of socks. The only thing I will say is that the that doesn't match is the length of the ribbing. Only because uh, the second skein did not start at the same point that this one started at. I mean, I probably could have just, you know, wound through the, or uh, rolled, or un unraveled the, the skein until I got to the next starting point, the next repeat. But honestly, I was like, no, nah, it's all right. I, I thought that they would match up pretty well. And they do. You can't really tell unless you're really ogling them. Um, but yeah, they match. I'm happy. And these are on my Bryson, um, my Bryson sock blockers, the metal ones. And I love them. So yay, another pair for my box of socks. And in case you missed it last week, this is my box of socks. And I love it. So another pair into the box, it goes. Um, so I feel like that was a lot of rambling. I hope I got the details out. If you have any questions, uh, please um, 
please ask me in the Ravelry thread. Uh, I did create, a, there is a thread for the Box of Socks, Cal. Um, so please feel free to share your progress, your photos, and oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot believe how many people are excited about this knit along. Um, I am actually blown away. And every time I pop into that thread, I am just amazed by all the gorgeous socks that are being knit. It's just so fun. It's, people love knitting socks. What can I say? Um, so yeah, if you want inspiration or just, you know, it's just such a wonderful thread just to browse through. Um, so yeah, that'll be opened all the way until, uh, I can imagine this thread is going to go, it, it's going to grow. Um, but yeah, come, uh, January 1st, 2017, I'm going to lock the thread and then create a separate thread for, uh, entries to win the giveaway prize. And I imagine I'm hoping to have a lot of prizes because this is, this is a huge knit along. So, um, yeah, feel free to join in. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to seeing all those gorgeous hand knit socks. So, okay. So on to the next object that is off my needles. And when have I ever, ever had like three projects off the needles at the same time in one episode? I am on a roll this week, guys. Um, so as you know, I showed you last week that I had been, uh, designing a new shawl pattern, uh, and I finished knitting it. So, and thank you to everybody who has reached out to me about test knitting the pattern. I had not even officially asked for test knitters yet, uh, but many of you have reached out to me and I said, okay, great. Um, and you know, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I now have at least six test knitters that I will be sending this pattern out to next week. So, but I wanted to get the, I wanted to finish knitting the sample and writing up the pattern to send to them. So I, I got pretty much all of that done over the weekend and I finished it. I finished knitting the shawl. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before the day before yesterday. So it is done. And now it's just a matter of writing up the pattern, but I posted a sneak preview of it on Instagram earlier this week, but here it is in all its glory. And I cannot be more excited about this pattern. Um, and it, the pattern name is called Wildemir, which is German for wild sea. Um, and it's totally inspired by my crazy obsession about the sea, uh, crazy obsession for the sea and mermaids. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is just an eyelet pattern, a textured eyelet pattern on the top. And then here you have like this scalloped or um, shell motif along the edge. And then it has an applied border and like a wave motif. And I feel like with all these elements combined, it's really hard to tell on this camera, but with all these elements combined, it, these little motifs here look like mermaid tails jumping into the waves. I don't know if you guys see it, but I do. <laughs> so that's why I named it that. Um, and then I added some beads as well, just to add a little shimmer. Um, and the pattern will have directions for beads and it will also have patterns for, I mean, directions for um, those who are not interested in knitting the pattern with beads. Um, but as you know, I have a tutorial on how to knit with beads in case you're curious about learning. Um, but yeah, so I will be sending out the test pattern, uh, to the, uh, I will be sending out the pattern to test knitters, uh, to start working on that, uh, at the beginning of next week. And I'm hoping to release, uh, this pattern, um, when is it on March 1st? So one month from now, this will be available, uh, for you guys to knit. And yes, so here it is again. And I, oh, I should probably tell you what yarn this is knit out of. This is out of my Narwhal base, Woolen Vine Yarns in Narwhal, which is a blend, lovely, lovely blend of uh, Superwash, BFL, Blue Face Luster, Silk, and Cashmere. And this is in my Venus Flytrap colorway. And this green, you guys, I can't tell you how obsessed I am with this green. It just goes with everything in my wardrobe. Um, and yes, just to try it on. I'll put you back on, I promise. Do you guys talk to your hand knits? I do. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, yeah, so let's wear it like this. You know, you can wrap it around. Like it's a triangular shawl. You, you guys know what this is about. So you can wear it like this. <laughs> or I will post photos of this very soon. I took, a, I did a little um, photo shoot yesterday with it. So those will go out soonly. Um, yeah, this is how I normally wear my triangular shawls, but you know, you get the idea. So very excited about that. Um, and thank you for all the lovely comments on, on the Instagram photo. Uh, it really means a lot to me guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now my hair is crazy. Okay. <laughs> so 
Yes, I will definitely keep you guys posted as to when this pattern is released. So, and now I have the design book, so now I want to design all the things. Um, yeah, so, okay, and that is it for what's off my needles this week. Um, as far as what's on my needles, not much. Um, I know, sorry, my knee was hitting something. Um, I know I have a lot of uh, works in progress still on the needles, namely my lumpy space, which I want to finish, um, and then my Aisling shawl, which I cast on while I was in, it in Italy, and I have to say, I've lost steam on it already. I don't know what it is, but I'm, like, the colors together are not jiving the way I want them to. Um, I want it to be knit out of something else. Uh, so, another start-stop incident, but uh, I, I'm not going to push myself to finish it if it's not really calling out for me to finish knitting on it. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to frog back on that. Um, and then what I really want to cast on is a, a uh, what was it? The Doodler Shawl by Stephen West. Call me crazy. I know I have a thing with, it's a love-hate relationship with Stephen West patterns, but after seeing the Doodler in person, um, at Vogue Knitting Live, I could, I cannot get the pattern out of my head. Um, I don't know what I want to knit with it. Um, or knit it out of. Uh, I have a couple of ideas, but I haven't really decided yet. So, um, I will get back to you on that, but I, I don't know. But then I watched, <laughs> I watched Danny's podcast from the Little Bobbins and Little Bobbins podcast and, you know, hers is beautiful. She knit the same pattern and, um, she said, you know, the result is worth it, but it was not fun to knit. And I don't know, I'm kind of in the mood for a fun knit. Um, I don't know. And so, I don't know, TBD to be determined, but we shall see. But on the needles, because I finished knitting my last pair of socks, it only made sense to cast on another pair of socks. Um, so I decided to cast on a pair of monkey socks by Cookie A, and this is in my uh, Volen Vine Yarns, again, uh, in my footsie base, which is a superwash BFL, again, uh, with nylon. So it's my sock yarn that I am totally smitten with. I just love this base to death. Um, but yeah, this is my love song colorway, which is a Valentine's Day, one of my Valentine's Day colorways. But I think I love it so much, I will make this a regular in the shop. Like just, it won't be be seasonal because it is just, I really, really love the, you know, the combinations of the, there's like lavender in here. It's like a saturated cranberry. Um, there's some gray, there's some pinks. It's just a really awesome combination. Um, and this is in my uh, Chia Gu uh, project bag that I got at Vogue Knitting Live last week with my llamas. <laughs> so, yes. Let me see. Here's the cake. So, yeah, this is in the cake. Um, and there, I will have some of these in the shop update um, coming up tomorrow, uh, on Saturday. Uh, as you know, well, I'll talk about that in shop update. But as you know, um, I will be having my first international uh shop update tomorrow on Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, in case you're curious. Um, but anyway, so yeah, these are being knit on my, again, on my, yay, Magic Loop, and it's all tangled, on my Magic Loop uh, Carbons, US size 1.5, yeah, US size 1.5 in 2.5 millimeter uh, needles. So yay, I missed Magic Loop. I really, really love it. Um, and I also uh, want to cast on a pair of so two at a time socks, uh, which I recently learned how to do, amazingly. Uh, I was at Vogue Knitting Live and, you know, I, Mina was knitting on a pair of socks two at a time and she let me have a go at it. And it makes so much sense. It's just, you know, it's super easy to do. And I got, I got the gist of it right away. So, I am, I, these were supposed to be two at a time, but then I totally forgot that you have to have two separate cakes or a center pull from your cake. And I totally forgot to make sure that I made that happen. So these will be one at a time, but the next socks to go on the needles will be two at a time. So cannot wait for that. Um, so yeah, back into the project bag you go. Okay, wow, lots of talking. Um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so spinning for this week. <laughs> Amazingly, I have gotten a lot of spinning done as well. Um, and I mainly blame that on some podcasts that I've been watching uh, and listening to, because as you know, I have been binge listening to The Sweet Georgia Show, uh, hosted by Felicia Lowe, who is the dyer of uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns, and the founder of Sweet Georgia Yarns. Um, and she interviewed uh, Rachel Smith, 
of the knit, what is it, the Knit and Spin? Oh, the Wool and Spinning podcast, um, which is totally new to me, but she's had it for a while. And she is just amazing. If you are interested in learning how to hone your spinning skills, um, she has great podcasts. Uh, she, you know, she, it, it's a regular podcast. She shares what she's been working on, projects she's knitting, but then she also includes these really wonderful tutorials on, you know, like how to sample your fiber before actually working with it, um, and just, you know, just t all these really helpful tips and tricks. Uh, I just saw that she posted a new episode as well, so I cannot wait to watch that later on today. But uh, that one, and then uh, Chrissy from the what is it? Oh, Snappy Stitches podcast, which I've been watching on and off for a while. Um, and I really like Chrissy. She's, you know, both of them, uh, Rachel Smith and Chrissy are based in Canada. And just, she has a really, lo the two of them have like lovely, lovely personalities. Um, and Chrissy, you know, had recently just kind of, you know, gave her uh, podcast a uh, a remake, if you will. And, you know, she has a new setup and a new everything. And I was so excited to see that. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can actually see what you're working on and, you know, from afar. And, you know, it's just, you know, not that her podcast wasn't great beforehand. This just enhances the experience altogether. So if you haven't checked out the Snappy Stitches podcast, I highly recommend that you do as well. Um, and yeah, Chrissy as well is an awesome spinner and very enabling. Um, so those are two to really check out. Um, and since I'm on the topic of podcasts, another one that I wanted to mention, uh, Magdalena, uh, who is Polish, and I believe she is, she's not in Germany, I'm totally blanking. I will post this in the show notes, but um, she's originally uh, from Poland. And yeah, she reached out to me and you know asked if I could check out her podcast, and I, I did, and oh my gosh, you guys, she is so fun. Uh, she's only on her second or third episode, and she's just a natural, like I just really have, fun watching her and listening to her talk and she's so excited about like all of her projects and she hand dyes and um she just dyes really beautiful colorways and it, I should mention the name of the podcast that would help Kristen right um it's called the Wolf and Shafa podcast um so definitely check that out it's a uh, W-O-L-F-F uh ampersand and uh Schiff um S-C-H-A-F-E and it's hosted by Magdalena. So hi, Magdalena. Um, I really enjoyed watching your podcast. And yeah, so definitely check her out. Um, but yeah, it's like, I would liken her personality to Jill of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. She's just, again, very animated, really fun. And, you know, I feel like I meet, like, they're very, sim they have very similar personality, like a very similar personality to mine, where I'm just a little, you know, like, I get a little kooky sometimes, but hey, it's all cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, three podcasts to check out, but, um, yeah, I finished spinning my, my loop bump from Rhinebeck, uh, and I am amazed, like, I feel like every time I spin it just get it gets better and better, um, which is not surprising because that's how it should go. Um, but I'm I'm I've, I've, I'm totally impressed with myself to be honest. Um, and this is did I take no? It's over there. But I believe I have 333 yards of fingering to DK weight yarn, and there's some merino, tussa silk, uh, bamboo, and stellina in there. And it's self striping. I did an Navajo ply uh, just to maintain the color changes. But look at that. Look at that mauve. How gorgeous is that with the dark chocolate grays and blacks and charcoal and ugh, I have no idea what this is going to be. I really don't. I just want to squish it for a little bit, you know, because it's so soft. But I think I want to, I really want to dig into another loop bump, but I think I will spin something else next, uh, just just to give myself variety. I think I want to dig into my Narwhal Needleworks uh, <laughs> Polworth uh, because I've just been staring at it. It's just so gorgeous, um, and yeah. So anyway, DVD again. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think that is it for spinning this week. Um, I will move along to let me check my show notes. Do I have, I don't have any stash enhancements this week, which is surprising because it is my birthday month and I did treat myself to something, which I want to tell you guys about so badly, but I think I'm going to wait until it actually gets here. But it is spinning and fiber related. 
Well, I did get my, I, I did order a Bosworth, so that is coming in February, but I ordered something totally new and exciting that, do I tell you guys? Should I tell you? Ugh. Okay. All right. I'll tell you guys. Are you ready? I got a hackle. Yes. It is true, I purchased a hackle and it is on its way and I could not be more excited. I got, a, I got a Diz and everything and if you're not familiar what a hackle is, it's this bar of wood with spikes coming up out of it. So you know how you have hand carders? It's, a, it's another fiber prep tool basically. Um, so a lot of people use blending boards to make punies and rolags and uh, nests if you will or fuzzlings. Um, this is another way to make those. So it's just this long strip of wood with like two rows of spikes coming up and then you just take some fiber and lash it on and like layer it and layer it and layer it and layer it until you're happy with it. And then you take a diz, which is a circle with a hole in it, and then you kind of like pull it out and you get these lovely strips of um, combed roving, um, combed fiber. And it looks so fun. I watched so many tutorials on it. I know Andy from the Andre Sue Knits podcast uh, did a demo with one, and that's where I was like, I became fascinated with it. I was like, oh, that looks so fun. But I kind of let it go. I was like, I don't need any more fiber tools. And then this is going to sound totally crazy, but um, I actually had a dream one night. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going there. Um, I had a dream one night uh, where I was just using a blending board. I was blending and blending fiber and then making roll leg after roll leg after roll leg, puny after puny. And this was my dream. I was just cranking them out. And then I woke up and I'm just like, I kind of want to, I kind of want a blending board. I want to make these things. <laughs> so I hopped onto the internet like you do. And I just started researching blending boards. And then I remembered the hackle and I was like, you know, watching different tutorials, you know, and I, for some reason the hackle resonated with me. And I was like, I just want a hackle. <laughs> so I did a little more research and I purchased a Valkyrie. Um, yeah, a Valkyrie hackle. So, and I got clamps to clamp onto my table and I'm just waiting for it to get here. Um, yeah. So it's a little, I'm a little concerned because I ordered it from Valkyrie supply and I never received a, I received a confirmation on my order, but I never received like a shipment notification. Um, so I emailed them and I wanted to know it had already been a week and I was like, all right, you know, what's, cause I'm excited <laughs> and, you know, just politely, I wanted to know what I could expect the shipping time frame to be. Um, not like, where's my stuff, you know, just cause whatever. Um, so I was like, you know, can you please just give me a ballpark, you know, when I can expect to receive it, um, whatever. And I never heard back from them. Um, and then I researched on Ravelry and someone else had a similar experience where they tried getting a hold of the guy who runs the shop and another or supplier reached back and like, oh, he's in the process of moving, so give him some time. Uh, but that was like from three months ago, and I don't think he's still moving shop or anything like that. So I emailed him again. Still haven't heard anything, so I'm a little concerned. I'm gonna give it another week, and if I don't hear anything back or I don't have my hackle, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to investigate. But anyway, I'm sure it's fine. Fingers crossed. Anyway, um, so I'm very excited about getting a hackle. I will get a hackle one way or another. So, um, yeah, that is going to be super, super fun. And I cannot wait to share that with you guys. So, okay. Um, I am totally forgetting to do ask away. I'm trying to remember. I answered a, a couple in the ask away thread, uh, as you know, in the Ravelry thread, um, there's a, uh, thread called ask away where you can ask me anything about, uh, the show, knitting, spinning, anything at all, um, about me, um, that you want to know. And I will sometimes, you know, address it on the show or just answer it right there in the thread. Um, so, but this week I think I'm going to skip over it just because, yeah, I'm trying to keep the time down because I do have work to do. It's, I know this is already, this episode is already a day late, so I want to get it out to you guys. Um, so yeah. Okay. I'm going to go on to, do I have anything else? <sighs> no, I think that is it. So I'm going to move on to shop update. Um, so if you are not interested, happy knitting. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for coming by this week. Um, but yeah. Okay. Shop update stuff. I am having an international shop update uh, tomorrow, Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, as you know, uh, as I mentioned in a previous episode, uh, the last Saturday of every month, 
uh, I will be having an international friendly update. So normally my usual updates occur on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but um, just to kind of help out people who live across the pond and in Europe and wherever else, uh, Australia, um, whoever else, you know, tends to miss out on those usual updates, uh, has a chance, has another time frame to jump in on it. So tomorrow it will be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. I know I said that last week and I apologize. It's in the morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, <laughs> so we got that. Um, but yes, shop update tomorrow. Um, oh, okay, sorry, I'm sitting cross-legged. I'm trying to bend over and it's not happening. I have to do stretches. So, <laughs> tomorrow I will be having some Venus flytrap on across all my bases. Uh, this is it on Footsie, uh, and I will have it on Narwhal. This is what I knit my shawl out of. Um, and then I will have Black Pearl. This is Black Pearl on uh, Blitzed, and I will have it on other bases as well. Um, Gashly Crumb, this is it on Narwhal. And I will have Outlander, and this is it on Footsie. Uh, yeah, Footsie, and then I will have some uh, Enjoy the Silence. Here it is on Narwhal. And then I will have some Love Song, my Valentine's Day colorway. And then I will have some Moondrop, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of being blown out right now, but it's this very soft, uh, grayish lavender with like subtle shades of blue and pink and gray and this is it on blitzed um, and then I will have dead calm which is just this really lovely kind of I don't know, just deep sea blue if you will like a hint of green to it um, so yeah and I'm gonna try and dye it as I usually say I'm like <laughs> I'm gonna try and dye up some more colorways today if I have time but um yeah, so those will be in the shop tomorrow, and I hope you can make it. Uh, I am trying to plan a new yarn club, because I know it's been a while since I've hosted a yarn club, um, which is where, you know, whoever signs up, it's a, you know, a limited sign-up. Uh, I think this time around I can probably do 30, maybe more, we'll see, possibly 40. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try and do a yarn club where um, every month you get a mystery skein in the mail, uh, pertaining to a theme. So I'm toying with the idea. Sorry, there's a siren going by. Okay, so I'm toying with the idea of doing a Edward Gorey yarn club uh, for, the, for the months of March, April, and May. So I think I'm going to go with that. I had a couple of other ideas that I was tossing around, but I think I'm going to go with Edward Gorey. So whoever signs up will get three skeins of Edward Gorey themed yarn. Um, and it'll, it'll be totally exclusive to yarn club members. Um, I won't, I will not guarantee that those will be repeat colorways or become repeat, repeatable colorways. So it may be a one-off, it may be whatever, but if they are a repeatable colorway, it will not be available for three months after the, um, the yarn club is over. So Yay! Excited! Exciting news! I know, I mean, many of you have been asking me about yarn clubs, um, so that's my response. Yes, there will be a yarn club, and it will be Edward Gorey inspired, so that'll be coming up very soon, and yeah, I hope you guys are excited about that. So, okay, I feel like I've been rambling on and on as usual, uh, just a lot of talking, and I don't have my tea. Ah, what's wrong with me? So, um, I, mean, I guess I'm, I'll talk about blather for now. Um, as I mentioned, we had a snowstorm. Uh, we hunkered down, we knit a lot, we just watched a lot of Fargo on uh, Amazon Prime, which is our new favorite show to watch. Uh, we ran out of Vikings to watch, I think that's coming back next month, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, we've just been really addicted to Fargo. We watched the entire first season, which is an offshoot of the original uh, movie by, was it the Coen Brothers? I think it was the Coen Brothers, but yeah, um, it's just so well done. Bill, uh, Billy Bob Thornton's in it. Tom Hanks' son is in it, he plays the cop, um, and the, I can never remember his name, but he's the original Jim from the British version of The Office, and he was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He plays um, Lester Nygaard in it, and it's just brilliant. So if you haven't watched it, it's not for children, it's very dark, it's very violent, but it's so 
well done. So highly recommend it. Um, and what else have I been doing? Yeah, I've just been keeping busy dyeing yarn. Uh, I have not been sewing lately, which really stinks. I think mainly because I ran out of white thread, so I had to order more. Um, but now that it's actually staring me in the face, I think I'm going to be trying to get some sewing done. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, my birthday is this weekend. I cannot wait. Ah, so exciting. Uh, I think I'm just gonna have a quiet night out with Dennis. We're gonna go out to eat. Um, I'm going to see if he can take me to um, Brooklyn General to do a little yarn shopping. Uh, and there's this museum in Gowanus that I want to go to. It's very... If you know me, I, I like the dark things. <laughs> um, I went to the Mutter Museum in, when we were in Philly, and there's this one museum in uh, Gowanus. I cannot remember the name of it. Why can't I remember the name of it? But they have a lot of uh, taxidermy and a lot of oddities and um, just a lot of interesting things like that. So I've been wanting to go forever, and I can never get Dennis to go, but I'm like, it's my birthday. You have to take me. Um, so we're going to try and get into that. It's a very small museum anyway, so it won't take forever. He won't, you know, be tortured too long. Um, my uh, parents came in town yesterday. They took me out for dinner. Take, they took Dennis and I out for dinner uh, to celebrate my birthday. We went to this really good Greek restaurant in our or Greek fusion restaurant in uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Um, I ate a lot of octopus. I love octopus. It is just the like, grilled. It's just delicious. And I apologize if I'm offending any vegetarians out there. Um, it's my favorite food ever. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I had, we had that, we had a lovely time, um, and it was great to see them because I haven't seen them in a while. Um, so yes, and that was fun. Uh, Dennis, afterwards, uh, Dennis got me some macaroons from this one bakery that was down the block and oh, so good. macaroons are my favorite or the macarons. Uh, they're those, they come in many different flavors. I got one that was in a rose flavor and a Nutella flavor and we just, I only need one and I'm good, um, but they're, they're just so delicious. And normally I don't have a sweet tooth at all, but I do love macarons. I will say that. So that was really nice. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much what's, what's happening. Um, I'm going to visit my grandmother tomorrow. I know I mentioned that last weekend, but because we got snowed in, um, we pushed it back to tomorrow. So I will be going upstate to visit her. Um, to celebrate her birthday. I think she's, I think she just turned, uh, 81. So it'll be really good to see her. I have not seen her in forever. So, um, yeah, that'll be really nice. And I think that is pretty much it for this week. So that said, I hope you are all keeping warm, getting lots and lots and lots of knitting done. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next week. Happy knitting. Bye.